Warning. Uh, just as a heads up, this episode of Pointless Witticisms contains descriptions of strong violence and sexually themed violence. Uh, yeah, you have been warned. That's usual fare for the Aliens series and sort of a side thing in Predator. Now, for anyone with no understanding of either franchise crossing over here, Alien is a dick-headed monster that chases women, and the Predator is a vagina-mouthed alien that stalks men. And Alien vs. Predator was about a pyramid in Antarctica full of aliens that Predators came to kill. And this film is about a bunch of men in the rural United States having to deal with aliens crashing into their town and killing the entire town, and one Predator just sort of killing aliens. They He's not really that much of a threat to the human characters, like he kills one or two, but that's mostly by accident, really. And once, actually, for comedy, and... Yeah, just like a stray shot accidentally kills one of the human characters in this film, and that is hilarious when it ends up happening. Um, now, as part of the Alien and Predator franchise's weird relationship with each other, like, they're both two really big, iconic 20th century fox monsters, but, um, one happens to be a wee bit different from the other. See, whereas the Predator is a masculine power fantasy dude versus giant monster thing that deals with a different dude and a different giant monster thing every uh, time, the Alien franchise is about the uh, same woman and same chain of events leading to further and further misery, usually. Um, and... This film has, it. well, it picks right up where Alien vs. Predator left off, with an alien coming out of a Predator on board of a spaceship, which means that it behaves a bit like an Alien sequel because it's adding misery onto the end of an existing film. But, like a Predator sequel, there are no recurring characters between the films Alien vs. Predator and Alien vs. Predator Requiem. Now, um... You barely even have to have seen any of the earlier films to get this one, because it is just, there's a cool alien dude that is coming here to kill the other scary aliens that are a threat to everyone. And, of course, the military is trying to evacuate and the aliens kill everyone anyway. I like to think of this film as the sort of film the Predator span off from, actually. Uh, aliens on Earth, humans playing with Predator technology, sleepy mountain town but still fucking huge, with high schools with football fields and government research facilities, and there's a military character with a spouse and a child that's threatened by the Predator. Uh, aliens has a daughter figure for the main characters that she has someone she can fight for and save for, and they try to do that in this film, but the military woman and her daughter are just sort of on the side compared to the central characters of the film, which are two cool brothers who are in high school and think they're cool. And as far as I can think of, this is the only alien or predator film to have no main characters of colour. Interestingly, everyone is a white rural American. And the central two dudes have next to nothing unique about them, which isn't like far from an alien protagonist, uh, Ripley, the starring character of the Aliens franchise, is known for just being a sort of, like, space trucker, and get her day job is what lands her in trouble with the alien, rather than, like, any badass action hero stuff. Now, um, the Alien vs. Predator series is called Aliens vs. Predator here, which is a bit of a smart enough idea because Alien was about one alien that was virtually unstoppable, but Aliens was about several hundred aliens that could be shot and killed by the dozen because there are loads of them. And this film is the only movie in the Alien franchise to ever stick the aliens in a free-range environment. Like, just letting them run around freely removes an awful lot of the scary aspect the aliens because suddenly some dude with a shotgun can kill one of these things rather than being ambushed around a corner as much like um it takes away from a lot of the fear of it and when an alien is in singular it tends to be a solitary sexual violence themed monster but in multiple they are just sort of scary insect things with a big queen and well, they don't have a queen in this film. They have a Predalien, a Predator alien. An alien that grew out of a Predator. So now the alien has green blood, like it already did, and it has a scary extra mouth outside of its mouth, which it already did. And, um, well, just about the only thing it really gets from infecting a Predator or whatever is hair that looks like tentacle dreadlocks and being a little bit bigger 
it's a big bread alien and it can also lay new eggs, which it needs to do in order to make hundreds and hundreds of aliens so that there can be hundreds and hundreds of aliens to shoot and kill, even though this film is roughly a single night and day long. We follow a load of human survivors, of course, with the um, aforementioned uh, mother and her daughter, the bullied kid and his cooler brother. They all get to use the Predator's weapons at one point to kill aliens, and a few of the characters escape, but everyone else gets to die for the audience's amusement. This film adds a few new technological things to the Predator's arsenal, which can be used to neatly remove any, any evidence of alien technology with this blue acid that you just pour over it and melt it all. And it also gives the Predator landmines, which can be used to blow things up, and are probably a bit unfair for any uh, human protagonists to fight in a future Predator installment, which is why they haven't really shown up in any of the Predator films since, as far as I can recall. Now, um, the Predator in this film dual wields Wolverine claws and has a gun on both of his shoulders because that's how cool he is. He's got a scar through one eye and he's the only Predator in this film, so he gets to win against the aliens the entire time until the very end. And there are a few more Predators whose job is to die in the opening scenes of this movie, and you have to compare that to the first Alien vs. Predator movie where we had three Predators in most of the film so that we could kill them off whenever we need to see something badass and make the aliens seem scarier by, you know, showing that they can actually harm the Predator. And they did that similarly in Predators later on, when they have multiple Predators that the human characters can kill off one at a time when they need to, like, have a human character go down badass killing one of them. This film sets itself up for a sequel in the end credits stuff, but The Predator is as close as we're probably going to get to a sequel. Like, if Alien vs. Predator was proof of how silly and cool a film can be made about the aliens and predators, because it's in Antarctica, there's a pyramid, there's aliens, there's predators, there's loads of crazy fight scenes, this film is about as uncool of an Alien vs. Predator film as you could probably make. Because it follows ordinary, boring people. Nobody really wanted to see Predator killing high school teenagers. And I certainly didn't want to see the alien on present day Earth. Because the barrier to aliens fighting Predators should probably be that the aliens are in a science fiction future setting, typically, where they fit in rather well with the blocky technology aesthetic of the Aliens franchise, and the Predators just fuck around and kill people on present-day Earth, where their tribalist clothing um, sets them apart from the modern-day sort of stuff that they're up against. And, uh... Yeah, the aliens aren't that scary when there are hundreds of them, and the Predators get to look the coolest in the crossovers because we can't just kill them all right away, and they have to be the masculine power fantasy and murder these things by the hundreds. Uh, the worst scene in this film is one where an alien goes into a maternity ward and assaults pregnant woman. It doesn't actually add much to the film, it's just gross out horror, and it's not even that inventive an innovation as far as the Alien franchise goes. Alien Resurrection has an alien baby being used by someone else who's about to die from it bursting out of his chest as a weapon, because he just lines someone else up in front of him so that when the alien baby bursts out of his chest, it bursts into the other person, injuring them. And this film just has a predator alien that kisses pregnant women and forces embryos down their throat in a very pointless and very horrifying scene. Uh, the best scene in this film goes to just about anything where the predator is on screen alone doing his mystery investigation stuff through the first half of the film. It's silent and wordless and conveyed through a lot of visual stuff and the sort of mime-like motions that he makes, and he's got this anger as he sees what happened at the start of the film, and even before that we see him just sitting around in his fishnets on an alien planet full of pyramids, and he's just waiting for an excuse to do a lock and load montage. I suppose that means that ultimately I just said that I prefer Predator's themes of masculine power fantasy over Alien's themes of sexual assault imagery, which I do because whereas the Alien franchise is good and builds that into the central character's narrative and arc, in any crossovers and stuff, it's just something horrible that they're propagating to side characters to gross us out or show that the film is horrible. And yeah, the Alien films and sequels get less and less subtle and something is lost, whereas the Predator films gain something through endless recreation of Predator.